Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video. You're here with your host, GBHL Damien. And GBHL Tom. And we are here with episode 76 of uh, the. Yeah. Per no? No. 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 It's not. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> it is not episode 76 of the Palantir. No. A big twist! It, <laughs> it's a big twist. <laughs> it is, in fact. What episode is it? 135. Ah. I'd like that you went up and checked. Yeah, Thank you check. for your confidence. I did check. You're lost without a comment review. Yes. Uh, it's episode 135, Speak Friend and Question, with your regular hosts. Do you wish Damien and do you wish Tom? Irregular hosts. Irregular. Mm. I'm very regular. Okay. Four we do a day. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you, this, is, this is coming out um, five weeks after the last Speak Friend and Question, like normal. Yeah. Um, it's the normal five week gap. <laughs> um, but the, 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 it was recorded. And uh, unfortunately, Speak Friend of Question 135 had some uh, irredeemable technical difficulties, uh, which James tried to save, but uh, could not, and then <laughs> didn't quite have the heart to go back and re-record all that stuff again. So he got asked to do it. Um, so we were like, yes, we'll answer. We'll do it. So um, Gondor we'll... calls for aid. Gondor calls for aid, and Twickenham and Tifa answered. <laughs> so yes, we will plunge on, but um, James sends his apologies and his love. And he'll uh, be back uh, with someone or other next week, I'm sure. Shall we so jump ask in? Ask him questions, not us. Yeah, we're not going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't ask any questions to Damien and Tom. Uh, we're like fleeting guests. By all means, praise us or criticise us, but, but don't ask us questions. I'll do the questions. first one. Yeah. We brought tea into everything. Messing up, speak friendly question, man. We're not, just so you know, we're not going to play by society's rules here. We're going to, you know, that's the way we do things. Okay. Yeah, we're rebels. Would you like to be odd or even numbered questions? That's a good way to not play by the rules. <laughs> Get that sorted for the start. Or prime numbered questions. Could not care less. Why don't you crack on with Ryan Ratchford? It's Ryan Ratchford who's had an edited comment. Oh no. Um, so yes, he's also had three likes. This is going to take a while. Yeah. <laughs> he has read more. <laughs> All right. Oh my, what is your computer? Okay, I'm getting there. It's really good. It's really good feeling like I'm getting back into the hobby again. All of one month ago. With so much content content coming back onto the channel and being able to attend tournaments again since such a long time gone. I want to thank you, James. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Uh, for hosting an amazing convention and I had a wonderful time. Oh, there's going to be so much hard con chat. I'll, I'll be James. I'll, <laughs> take, I'll take it. You'll take the praise. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Um, I've just started painting my Iron Hills Dwarves. Very exciting. I was curious to when you would plan getting work on yours done. Is there a hobby vlog on that, Damien? Or two? Uh, yes, I, I'm going to, I'll take the praise for James, but if you actually ask a question to James, we'll assume you're asking it to us, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have started on my dwarfs, um, I've, I showed them in a hobby vlog, I haven't made much progress since then, I haven't done any hobby in a few weeks, which yeah. is why I haven't done a hobby vlog. I've started painting Mounted Dane though, okay. um, but yes, yeah, so I have cracked straight on. Yourself? Uh, I have not cracked straight on, I'm afraid. They're in the box. Any plans to do them soon? Or? No, because you're doing them and we generally do different things. We do, because maybe we'll need them for stuff or in the future. Not. Or maybe not. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I hope maybe next week I'll do a bit more. Cool. Um, and the PS is weirdly apt. It says, feel so weird but nice with the two of you back doing videos again. Oh, well, I can't wait for a there and back again book review. Oh, well this has become, this is five weeks ago, this yeah. has become massively topical. Um, so yes, it was good to see James there back again, and you can expect all sorts of there and back again um, goodness starting today. Ah, it's not here. We've got ours. What um, is it? It's, it's is next it door. Next door. Go get it. Go get it. All right. Well, you've got Phil. Phil. Yeah. You know you're good at that. I'm. I'm great at that. Yeah, the bus come. Woo! Um, I think as we're recording, it is Friday night, and James has put up the first thoughts. I, I, there's just a. Um, what do you call it when it's the video snapshot for a video? What's that called? The preview? What? The video shot. Well, James is just sniffing the book. Yes. With a green screen background of text that you can't read. I might think it looks like he's doing a different activity. Well, you might also read. What's you know, in the bathroom. Oh, they've all got it. It's here! Yeah. It's out! <laughs> it's magnificent! It's and it does smell glorious. Oh, fantastic. Get your face in there. Mm. So, yeah, um, it's out. It's wonderful. Go and get it. Go pick it up. It's sold out. Probably can't. Um, <laughs> wait for it comes back on. It is amazing. Brilliant. Question two. Uh, Dominic Gibson. Hi, guys. I want to get my fiance into the hobby. Unli unlikely. And currently <laughs> collect Thranduil's Halls. What would you recommend for a complete novice, both gaming and painting wise? Thomas. Mm? 
Oh, um, Thorin's Company from the box would be cool. Or the Minds of Moria Fellowship. Yeah. Something like that. Cool heroes. Whatever um, she and likes. Plastic. Yes. Easy to put together. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say whatever she likes most yes. in the movies. Uh, get her to tell you about her favourite scene, uh, the bit she really likes. The credits. Yeah, the credits, good. You get a little Peter Jackson model, <laughs> Fran Walsh. And then, um, and then go for that, because you're always more impassioned if you are painting and playing with the models you like. That's why you do the ferals. <laughs> so, Star Fox. Hey guys, I was just wondering what happened to the Tom versus James game at Nova. Is there anything James could have done to beat Tom? Not really. <laughs> or anything he could have done differently to win it? Not really. <laughs> Go on, have your moment. <laughs> what happened in the Tom v James game at Nova? Um, to be fair, we had it. We had, this couldn't have come out better. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we had a. He had his Rivendell Knights shooting at my Wood Elves, so I've got more models but he has slightly more bows so and he's got the defense six so i think he was thinking he'd outshoot me um but i had some blinding light with galadriel but i had to spread out because i was going to have to jump on objective so i didn't really use the blinding light and james used saruman to immobilize galadriel to stop her from doing the blinding light um but yeah then james decided that he didn't want to roll well for shooting no oh, mistake yeah, so I actually won the shooting war, and then when we got to jumping on the objectives, I had the numbers advantage um, that I hope I think James had hoped he'd whittle down with his superior shooting, but he didn't like shooting well. Mm, so he could have he could have shot better. Yeah, and my Legolas out auto hit his Legolas yeah. and killed his Legolas. Megalus. Well, that's definitely out auto hitting it. Yeah, if one kills the other. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's my difference. Did you ever think about scoring less victory points? No. In the game? No. Because maybe if you'd have scored less victory points, Nova would have had a more deserving champion. <laughs> you think? Does that ever bother you? Uh, no? No. No, probably not. No conscience. No. My question, uh, TNG Productions loved this. Tom's question. Ugh. Tom Turtle. Wah! Thanks, TNG Productions. Yeah. Wah! I've been out of the hobby, um, been out of the hobby and off GB channel and HGG channels for too long. But it feels great to be back. I didn't realise how much I've missed your dulcet tones brightening up my Sunday afternoon. Anyway. You're welcome! <laughs> anyway, I can't think of an SPG question this week. Oh, no. But did you see any good films over the summer uh, in the cinema? If so, what was your... Presumably? What was your? <laughs> what was your? What was your? Did you see any good films? <laughs> Do you know um, what film is? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, did, was there anything on in the summer at the cinema? Not age I've old. seen Fantastic Beasts. That's one thing. Don't just come out, you drunk! Yeah, but that's all I've seen. <laughs> yeah, but. It's my first film. What else do I Oh, I saw The Jungle Book. Oh, yeah, it's only that good. was the other thing. The Jungle Book was good. I went with my cousins who are, mm, I'm going to say, 11 and 13. Don't know how old they are. Hmm? Don't know how old they are. Mm. About that. Yeah. They're only family, though. Yeah. But yeah, Jungle Book was really good. Um, Fantastic Beast was great, but that was not in the summer. You'd... I don't, I don't know, I must have seen something, it was a long time ago. Um, Jurassic World. <laughs> All the Jurassic World. I watched Jurassic World at home a lot. Uh, I did go and see Jurassic World recently at Backyard Cinema. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was true. Backyard Cinema was incredibly cool, something they do in London. Where they kind of, uh, they have, they, they had a thing called The Lost World for this section of films and they they dress this kind of warehouse out like a like a jungle, mm -hmm. and you go and sit on beanbag armchairs. Thing, it's amazing. It's only about sixteen quid. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And then they show every night, so they show like the Jungle Book, and they show Jurassic World and Jumanji and Jungle mm -hmm. themes. And their current their current one is Christmas. Um, but it's well cool. That was that was a few months ago, but um, very much enjoyed that. Cool. This us, yes. Lucas Whitcroft, right. Great to see the original parents of the GBHL podcast back together after so long. Indeed, it is. Um, my question is, do you think Azog's Hunters are good at higher points cost when optimised? I know after bringing them to Longbot on pure Azog's Hunters at a higher points cost is stupid. I was wondering if you, <laughs> it would be deemed acceptable to ally in a Ringwraith or Saruman. Just wanted to know your thoughts, Lucas. question. Is it? I would say... Did you use the word pure? You say pure Azog's Hunter yeah, and is then. stupid. <laughs> yeah, so you're not. Um, I. <laughs> but you did have Azog on foot, which is a big, yeah. a big drawback. You need them on that white wall. It, there's two parts of it. I, I would say, in a competitive terms, if you're talking about going to a tournament and winning, um, although there's someone sitting near me who would probably have some proof <laughs> against this, I don't think they are too competitive on their own. 
because um, you have to spend so many points on Azog and, and Bolg, presumably, and or Bolg, and uh, a relatively high points game. We must be talking about 800 mm -hmm. if you're going to have both of them. Um, you'll have at least one enemy caster who will just shut, shut them down, down, shut them down, shut them down. Um, so, in terms of top table stuff, no. If you then were to ally in a Ringwraith or Saruman, it immediately becomes a more competitive army. Mm -hmm. um, it stops being fluffy and themey, which is nothing wrong with that, and it will become far more competitive. World Champions had a lot of success mm -hmm. with a hybrid Azox Hunters. So I don't think he takes Azog. No, he takes Birda. He takes, takes Nazog. And Fimble and Nazog lead in the Hunter Orcs. Birda, who I think leads the Orc Spears, Spears behind the Hunter Orcs, and then a, I think there's normally a Shaman in there, and, and then a Wraith. Beast. Does he have a, I don't know, is it a fell I don't think he had a fell beast at, at Longbottom, but he had a Wraith. So he's then using the yeah. the benefits of them, which are the Hunter Orcs, the two attacks, strength four. Yeah, put the Shaman and that makes them better. And the Spears behind him. Yeah. And he beat my Ferals and Berserkers. But that's just roll dice, three dice on, three dice. And well, that's three dice on two. Oh, so I had the high fight value. But and you not wrap round? His, uh, I don't know. Nice it, was, it was mainly two, he, he, he's got more numbers than me. Yeah, yeah. And a big troll, he mainly had um, two, three attacks to my two. Yeah. And so he won, it was a very competitive army. You've done alright with pure Yeah, advance. Yeah, that was with Bolg on Warg. With who? Um, Bolg! That's oh, us. You, you, do you want to do it? No, no. Okay. So it's Bolg and a Hunter Orc Captain and a Gundabad Captain and a Gundabad Captain with Hunter Orcs and Hunter Orcs and Gundabads and Gundabads. Uh, how many points was that? 800. 800. Like that. Did alright? Yeah, that won an event. A 100 point event? Yes. I won a competitive 100 point event beating Ed, Beast, Fel, Ed Ball's Fell Beasts yeah, in the final game. Extremely lucky and it beat two lists with Terra causing Thranduil which was I know. Oh, no. no, you got a draw. One. You got a draw. Drew of one and beat another, which was horrendous having to face him because orcs are courage too. Of Tom's many talents on the tabletop, his absolute best is courage test. Yes. He either has <laughs> some very specific loaded dice, or he's very very good at rolling courage tests. Specifically for wargs or hunter yeah. orcs. Insane. But you yeah, see but it in action in the uh, <laughs> SPG issue one battle report. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, they're, they're not bad, and I've taken the Azog version of that list to events, and it's done pretty well until it comes up against. It's generally the Thranduil Wood Elf list it struggles against because of the terror. Mm -hmm. And then I think any list with a Thranduil Galadriel just shuts it down straight away, and anything with a Fell Beast generally is better. Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. It's not, ba it's not bad by any means. It just will struggle against things that are more optimised with a spellcaster. I think it would certainly be acceptable to ally in a ringway for a Saruman, but at that point you start building a yeah, competitive to tournament it. argument, uh, argument or, um, army rather than a yeah. fluffy one. But put Azog on a white walk, that's yeah. much better. The other thing about that is um, if you take Saruman and Azog, you're already Point chewing through your yeah, points as well. Points. It's a lot of yeah, points. Azog and Bolg are budget, huge points. Thing. Budget Ringwraith would be better. Yeah. Budget Ringwraith would do you a nice job. Yeah. Um, then you can be mobilising their heroes while they're mobilising yours. Uh, Sun of Hey, hey, welcome back, fellas. I'm afraid I didn't get any objective markers together for Ardacon. Boo. Boo. But I'm you hoping to spend nice. more time on the hobby again soon, being spurred on by Ardacon and the new Iron Hills stuff. But my question for this week is, after the amazing Ardacon weekend and the seminar from Adam and Jay, what are you most excited about seeing from the new range that is certain to come out over the next year or so? Well! I, I'm looking forward to Armoured Azog and Battle Trolls. Armoured Azog, you say? Could mm. that be such a thing? Could it? I shan't believe it. Could it? Azog. Heavy armour. It could only happen. It could only happen. That yeah. would be pretty exciting. That is exciting. A signal tower. A signal tower. A signal tower. <laughs> oh, spoilers. <laughs> That's amazing. Very good. Um, what did you say something about trolls? Yes. Uh, no, they're not in a, what, what kind, what flavour of they, troll do you think it's like? You said battle troll, but... A Gundabad troll? That could work. A troll brute? Could work. A catapult troll? All the trolls. That'd be pretty good. Um, you've had a flick through this. Anything you're particularly excited about? Um, so new stuff, new stuff. New stuff. I am very excited about the dwarf chariot. Yeah, the dwarf chariot would be well cool. 
Um, that and the signal tower will be awesome. I spelled gold wrong. Um, <laughs> the yeah, the chariot's cool. Uh, it's it's the evil stuff for me. Having having a Gundabad mm. army mm -hmm. um, now. It's it's the berserkers, the trolls, the war bats, mm. um, ogres, ogres, all that sort of stuff. I'm really really excited about. Spoilers. Um, getting all those new treats into the Gundabad army, I think is going to be very very cool. Um, next up we have Brad Thy Hipster. Yo guys! Now, nice to see that the show is back. We'll definitely be listening along whilst painting up some of the new dwarfs. Whoop, whoop. My question this week is, what do you think of this 850 point list? Leader, the undying on fell beast. It's gone, it's gone! Um, giant spiders, eight giant spiders, the spider queen, Drizak, six bat swarms and three wild marauders. Sounds delightful. Mm. Um, what do you think of this list? I think it sounds hilarious. Um, it, it's balmy, it's wonderful. Um, I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be tons of fun to use. Uh, the Undying on Felbeast makes me feel sick in my throat mm. a bit, um, but the other stuff's incredibly cool. Uh, Sam Page and Kieran Street yeah. have had some luck with a similar sort of thing to this. Yeah, they did just bat swarms, oh. the Warg and Warg Chieftain and the Spider, didn't they? <laughs> didn't they have something cast? They had a lot of cast uh, budget rate. Budget rate. And a cast line, yeah. Oh, two cast lines. But the um, I, I like the I like the theme of it. Yeah. Apart from the Felbeast, the whole kind of um, spiders, lots of spiders and mm -hmm. marauders. I would suggest you might want to put some Merkle spiders in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be good up to a point. Yeah, I think you'll get um, you'll get beaten by. I, I played Kieran with this sort of thing, and I had crossbows, and I just gunned down loads of them. Yeah. Um, because they can they can die relatively quick. Um, one one bat swarm is very useful, I think, in a in a kind of horde army where you can mm -hmm. put them on the heroes, and half the fight value. Whereas six bat swarms aren't as good on their own because okay, but they're you, all right. You be, to, yeah. You'll be outnumbered and you can be trapped, and it doesn't yeah. really matter if you half the fight value because yeah. their attacks will win the day. Yeah. And the thing is, mostly, if you're using a bat swarm, you need another model in there to have yeah, the height kind of, value, yeah. the fight value, because the bat swarms <laughs> even half the fight value is normally lower than everything yeah. anyway. Um, I think it'll do all right, and I think I think it will be fun to play with, and I think it'd be fun to play against, to be honest, even with the Felbeast, because the Felbeast is in a different kind of unit there. But I think it would get found out by anything with a lot of shooting. Yes. All right, on to Rotterdam White Scars. Hi guys, good to see you all back on the Speak Friend and Question Bench. Yes. It's a sofa. Yes. Again, thank you all for the amazing trip we had at Ardicom. We Not a problem. We loved all the people to, uh, who came to us telling us that we were doing, still doing amazing work. Yeah, you guys are. Check out Rotterdam Y Scars if you haven't already. But yeah, let's put a few questions on. If you guys are thinking about a new army concerning evil, what would be your top three? As in, up the new evil stuff? Or I don't think it's just the new stuff. Um, the you do one, I'll do one. You do one, I'll do new one. New Gundabads. Okay. Okay, I'll do, okay. I'll do New Gundabads at Ravenhill specifically. Uh, terribly specifically. Yeah. Um, what would you like to do? So that's Azog flailing his big thing. His flail? Yeah. <laughs> that's what flailing that. Stone, What's that thing? It's that flail. thing called when he, when he flails it around. What is it called? Um, I, I would... Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna... I'll, I'll put for my first one adding to my Gundabads, because that's, okay. that's now a new army, I think. Okay. Two! Um, that other one includes the signal tower. Two for evil. I'll go for the... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm thinking. Oh, okay. I'm thinking first. Okay. If I'm sticking with the, the Hobbit stuff... Don't have to, Tom. Don't have to. It will be cool to do the new ring wraith. Uh -huh. Very much an army on their own. Mm -hmm. But, oh. don't I'm old. <laughs> I would like to do Goblin Town. I've got loads of Goblin Town, and I think they're cool. Mm -hmm. Pure Goblin Town, there won't be a shame in the sight. I hope you felt me. <laughs> but, like, I've got whatever it is. Um, 50 goblins and the mm -hmm. Goblin King, and I'd like to get them paid up somewhere. And I would like to, but it will never happen for a long time, do a Grishnak and um, Gorbag. No, no, I'm talking rubbish. Ugluck, Ugluck and Grishnak. Better. Scouts and Orcs. Yes. Yeah. That'd be cool. Oh, I think, um, and I just, I've come to realise that this time will probably never happen, I'd like a cool movie themed Harad list. Um, so a mummock. Yeah, a mummock, some warriors and some of the riders. I like the models. I've got some of it. You've got the raiders. 
No, I've just, I've just got some harag guys on foot, I think. Mm -hmm. um, before The Hobbit came out, that was going to be my next army. I was going to do that, and then it just kind of got destroyed. Sharks on the background. Yep. Uh, there's more? Um, second question. You allowed to? Would What do you guys think about the new meta that you'll probably see with the release of the new book? Um, it'll be cool to have something different. Yeah, you'll have... I think you're going to see a lot of dwarves. Mm -hmm. You're going to see an awful lot of dwarves. Because mm -hmm. um, they're the first things out, everyone's buying them, everyone's very excited. And they're good. And they're good. So yeah, I would expect to see lots of dwarves and, and Dane being led by the champions of Erebor. Mm. I think when the, the round rides are cool, but I don't think they're going to be... They're, I think they're going to be used in armies that people want, but yeah. I don't think they're going to be the... Uh, on the armies that are necessarily winning tournaments. No. I think it's going to be the the warriors. Yeah. Who are who are doing the grunt work? Yeah, um, I think that's true of all the cool toys. I think you'll, you'll see a lot of people painting up the chariots and the blisters and the ram rides whenever they come out. Um, but it'll be the armies with loads of yeah. warriors that are just not dying, yeah. led by Dane. Yeah, that's going to do really well. Anything else in there? Um, I think the race could do it. Yeah, I think the race are good. And I think that that's the, dog order. The elves are better now. Yeah, elves are really good now. Um, we tried them out in the 50 point battle. Get them with dwarves as uh, well. We got the points a bit wrong because we were doing it in advance, but um, that's fair enough. But yeah, I think the Merc would just got a nice cheeky boost with cheaper palace guard yeah. and um, defence five warriors. So mm -hmm. they could have a bit of a bonus, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, um, thank you very much for everything and we hope to see you guys again soon. Hooray. Cheers, Duran and the rest of the Rotterdam White Scars. Uh, Ian Marley. It's I want to ask a question. Well, this is perfect. Um, as we are getting new stuff. Azog's Legion. Cool. Yes. So if you could only pick one to lead them, <laughs> Azog or Bob? This is a perfect question. And why? Bear in mind the way the game is going regarding how good we think Iron Hill's Dwarves are likely to be. Go. Bog! <laughs> I'll go Azog. Um, Even though I've won the tournament with Bog. But that yeah, was, hooray. We had our fun... Bulk yeah, we had a we we had a bit when we played doubles. I had Bulb, Tom and Azog, and then we went to that tournament having the kill off. Um, the smart money is on Azog, and over the course of five games, Azog proved it. It was a scientific experiment. Yes, we have empirical evidence, evidence now mm -hmm. <laughs> that Azog is more powerful. data point. Absolutely, it's enough. It's enough. Um, but Azog more expensive as well. Um, In the new profiles. Yeah, because you can take heavy armor on Azog. Azog can get heavy armor, so he defends seven. Yeah, but they both only have one fate. Yeah, so it's still Azog for me. Yeah, it's still Azog, but then Azog's more expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you had to pick one, now he can get to that magic defense seven. Mm. He's he's your obvious choice, mm -hmm. I think. Um, mm -hmm. That was always Bolg's real benefit. Yeah. The defense. But seven. I'd still take Dane every day over Azog. Yeah, <laughs> not to lead your Gundabaz though. Ah, he could do. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's gonna be um it's gonna be Azog. Yeah. Although he has who's better at killing the warriors now? Bold by a mile. It's bold because he Azog, needs five. Azog needs sixes on dwarves. Yeah, because Azog's not burly anymore. Well he is, but he doesn't have a burly weapon. Yeah, because he's yeah, that's it. Yeah, because he, he doesn't have um So yeah, sixes on dwarves is and Bolg needs Bolg needs fives. Fives. On the Iron Hills dwarves. Yeah, with on, the shield dwarves. Yeah, on the Iron Hills. If they defense eight. Yeah. Um so yeah. But you still got to go for Azog, I think. Mm. The six might. Yeah, actually thinking about it, without the burly bulbs, better. He's, be he's, be he's better against. I suppose you said about any troops. Tools. But as soon as you split them up, they're only defense seven. Yeah, but it's still five, but it's four, so for bulb. Yeah, well, it makes yeah, a suppose. huge difference getting plus one. Yeah. I think bulbs much better at killing troops. All Azog can do, not well, I say all he can do, he's still good, but he's he really needs to be hunting heroes now because mm. he's. His smashing through troops isn't going to be anywhere near as effective as it was. Yeah, so Bolg against the Iron Hills Dwarfs then, presumably. Mm. But Azok has the six might and the durable warg, which is. Yeah, the big. durable warg's huge. Yeah. It's absolutely huge. Um, yeah. Which is ironic because Bolg's warg is. Well, we might longer. just have to do it. We might just have to do a, um, a, new, a, new, a new version. Three screen instead. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, sort it out. Uh, anyway, <coughs> cheers again. Good question. Uh, Bradley Cobden. 
Do you think All Mounted Rohan is worth doing now since the inclusion of the Rivendell Knights? Are you talking about James? Yes, because the Rivendell Knights are boring. Well, the thing about All Mounted Rohan is there's a hierarchy of heroes. <laughs> as, I, as I understand it. What, um, who would you put first in there? I would put Harma first. Yeah, second. Second, I would put um, Theodred. Yeah, third. Third, the King's Huntsman. Yeah, good. Yeah. Fourth? Um, Mary Adok, yes. the Shire. Yes. Definitely. And after that, they're not worth taking. No. Um, I'm, I'm joking, of course. Theoden is first. Yeah. He hasn't got any will, though. Oh, Theoden. Um, um, well, Matt Ryan is worth doing. Yeah. Yeah. Of course it's, it's worth doing. It's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's always been pretty decent, especially with the all shooting. I am fairly certain what James would say is that, um, because he's the experienced one, he uses both these armies actually, um, that you have your sons of Aeol for your punching and your hitting, and you have your um, riders for your kind of skirmishing and shooting, and the Rivendell Knight does both of those things better mm -hmm. for cheaper. So the Rivendell Knight can shoot people and run away from it, and it can also charge in and punch through things. Not necessarily cheaper, but cheaper than a son of Aeol. Yeah, but you can do both. As opposed to having to buy yeah, one yeah, son of yeah, and yeah, one yeah. bow to get your punch okay. and your um, shoot. So, if you were, I think if you were trying to win a tournament, you would um, you would go with Rivendell Knights. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say you can't try and do well no. all the way around. You see an awful lot of Rivendell Knight lists. It's yeah. a bit, it's a bit boring. It's very, yeah. it's very in the meta. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with being boring. I'm not saying that, but I think your massive hordes and your fell beasts and your Rivendell Knights are kind of the things that you see troubling the top tables. Yeah. Okay, uh, on to you. Joseph Harley. Hi guys, long time since I last posted a question here. Had a great time at Articon. Huge shout out to James for making it possible. You're very, very welcome. It was knackering. Um, got a list question for Lothlorien and Merkwin, so I particularly appreciate Jamie's help. Yeah. Uh, Effie's available. Got this. I'm thinking of this for 700 points. Warband 1, Legolas with cloak and armour. Good choice. Leading four with Elves of Spear, four with Bow, one with Blade, and two with and Court. Sounds good. Uh, Warband two, Rumor with Cloak, leading the same Warband as Legos. Sounds great. Haldir with Cloak, leading uh, six with Elves. Uh, Gan off the ground with Horse, mm. and that is for 700 points. For 750, I'll give Haldir armor, a bow to a Wood Elf, uh, a bow to another Wood Elf, uh, two more Galathrim Court. Switching, ha uh, think about switching Haldir for a Galathrim Stormcaller in both lists. I think you would work well with Gandalf's strength and will. I'd like to be reasonably competitive, but we would like to keep Gandalf in. Sorry for the long post. Cheers. Not a problem. Jamie? <laughs> um, I don't think you need a storm caller. Personally, I'd rather have the extra might, and I wouldn't bother with Gandalf's strength and will on it, because you'd rather be blasting or immobilising with him. It's more worth it than strengthening to do an extra's wrap. Um, I mean, it seems like you I mean, I don't know. If you're going full-on competitive, I'd take Haldir around and put Thrandall in for... I don't know, and even if it is extra points when he's got his cloak and bow, Trandall is just better. Haldir's still great, but Trandall's just Jamie better. really rates Haldir. He calls him his grey man, doesn't he? He's, yeah, he's I, always his I one like that him. He sort of says that people um, people ignore, then you've got a kind of three might hero firing two shots a turn. Yeah, he's, he's still good, and I've taken him before. I just think if you want, you said you want to be competitive, I'd, Thrandall is better, but. There's nothing wrong with that list, and I wouldn't change anything. I I personally prefer Galadriel, so it's themed because then at least I oh know but Legolas is in there, so yeah, it's fine. Do you know what else I think Jamie would say? And you're gonna this is gonna be people are gonna kick off about this, but I think you would. I think Jamie would swap Legolas for Thrandor. Yeah, he probably. He's would. said recently he Jamie hasn't been taking Legolas, and mm -hmm. he said he hasn't missed him, mm -hmm. and he thinks the Thrandor threat is more. So yeah, Thrandor's a huge threat. I think he would have held it, and he yeah. would have Rumil. But I think I could be wrong. For my Ardican list, I had Haldir originally, and then you all convinced me to drop Haldir and take Legolas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and I, Legolas I was useful in one of the games for killing the leader, which did I think, make a big I think difference. It's, I think it's the obvious choice, and I think yeah. most people say it, but I, I'm just saying mm -hmm. Jamie sort of started moving away from him, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, my, my view is that I'd prefer to have Galadriel so I can bump up my numbers more because wood elves are relatively squishy so I like yeah, your numbers are going to be tiny yeah Cause... so if I was doing it I wanted to do Gandalf James done Gandalf before he's also done Saruman with them I think yeah. you've got 30 models 30 models yeah. or 700 when I do well with wood elves I take Galadriel I just prefer her because I don't feel the need for the blasts 
and I feel more protected having more men to more elves to die and not be broken. Cool, cool. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, is it me or you? It's you. Okay. Captain Gold Teeth. Is that for Teeper? Must be. Yeah. Uh, that's a mighty fine shirt on the left. Oh, you're on the left on the video. Yeah, you're on the left. Yeah, I'm on the left. Really? It's like a teenager's first disco. Right. You know, you know that first shirt you get? What's Your mum probably got it for you. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, I've shirt, I've been trendy. <laughs> now I'm wearing a shirt. And then you look back on it in years to come. You go, oh, what was I wearing? Like your entire wardrobe. <laughs> oh, I get it. I'm not wearing a shirt under the t-shirt, the t under the shirt. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's how that works. Yeah. And now if I put that on over this, yeah. you would be laughing. Um. There. Okay, I missed out this year, but as you are repeating Ardican, I'll be there next year. Very good. When is Ardican next year, James? It's gonna be um, in 2017. Good, I think. Yeah, yeah. good. Planning a lot. I, I'm just five pounds for a ticket, right? <laughs> yeah, you've heard it here. <laughs> you've heard it here. I'm... It's a leak. <laughs> it's a leak. It is five pound a ticket. I think I'm having talks with a hotel very soon right, it's about good. <laughs> dates for next year. I think that's on my itinerary. Good. So hopefully as soon as I've had these talks, um, I'll be able to let you all know uh, when the next one will be. It's going to be bigger and better than ever, uh, than last year. Um, yeah. Okay, as for my question, how many trolls is enough for a Mordor army? I don't Ten. know how many trolls is enough for a Mordor army. Uh, one. It depends on how many points for one. That's a very good point. Um, if it was a 100 point tournament, <laughs> you'd have to go one, wouldn't you? Um, I don't know, if I was taking a single troll, I would probably go for... I, I prefer the troll drummer, because Mordor Army's tradition... Because you're a drunk? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> troll Army's tradition... Uh, troll Army's... Mordor Army's traditionally would get shot, so at least that moves you around quickly. As you're getting shot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the Troll Chieftain's very good until you break and then he Troll Chieftain away. is very good. He, I hate seeing them. Yeah. But he does run away if you break. You kind of want... I, I think... In terms of point sinks, a, a troll's good to have hurling and stuff. Mm. I think, but if you want two and you're mm. doing a competitive army, you you need to get to like, I don't know, 700, 800 points. Yeah. But otherwise, if I see a lot of trolls in a small army, I, I normally think it's a good thing. Some people take a, a troll cheat and, and a troll and then a horde of orcs. That, yeah. that can happen. But Why yeah. not go all troll? You can do that. It's a bit, it's a bit dull. All troll is dull? Yeah. For the opposition. Is it? Yeah. I think it's quite a cool army. Uh, I don't think it's filthy or anything. No, it's not filthy. I, quite, I think that's I, quite, it's I like just, all in. I just generally don't like playing all hero. It, it's not quite yeah, all it's hero. It's all warrior. Yeah, I think. <laughs> all right. Anyway. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm done anyway. with that. Anyway, cheers, Captain. Seven is the answer. Greenwood. Greenwood, the great. Great seeing the original crew back together. Um, lovely t-shirt James, thank you, Disney 2010. <laughs> now with these dwarfs popping up all over the place, hit them with a mallet, uh, they'll probably be flooding into the tournament scene soon. How do you reckon they will influence the game? Do you see any old units getting a renaissance as a reaction to the Iron Hill dwarf influx? For me they're lovely figures but I'm not overly impressed by the rules. What? At least not in theory. The units are cheap, lots of good special rules and defence 8. She will <laughs> even implies... To went prone. to prone, which makes them nigh on impossible to kill. Well, that sounds quite impressed with the rules, doesn't it? I yeah. mean, where is the challenge in playing with them? Cheers. Oh, you see, he thinks they're too good. Yes. But I'm not overly impressed with the rules. They're cheap, lots of good special rules, and defence eight makes Strength them nigh impossible to kill. Uh, where's the challenge in playing with them? Uh, winning, probably. <laughs> I mean, you'll, 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 you should have fewer numbers, but then they are relatively cheap for what you get. Well, I think. Um, They've obviously they've had a strong There's, start because yeah. they've, they've won two tournaments, right? Yeah. But they're still going to struggle at some of the movement-based scenarios. Yeah. Um, so the things are but the they units win, are cheap. They're they not cheap. They didn't win in Sterling. No, they didn't win in Sterling. They're, they're cheap for what you get. Yeah, I think I think they might. But still, a Hazard Guard. Yeah, exactly. There's there's a kind of debate about the value of whatever fear, Dane's fearless rule against yeah. bodyguard and all that. But they're not. It, it's a point here or there. It's not. Yeah. It's not like they're five points. No. Um, Defense is great, but you can split them up pretty quickly because to get to back away into two models is not an easy thing. No. 
I, th I think it's one of those things. This this really reminds me of Desolation of Smell Gear when the Mercury Rangers, Rangers came out. Yeah. And they went, Elves with 100% bows? That's insane. And they're going to dominate everything. And they haven't. No. I don't. I don't know, but I can't think... They were more expensive, though, to... Yeah, the Elf Cloak the is a really nice balance for that. And I, I don't know if an army... I can't think of an army of Mercury Rangers ever winning a tournament. No. Um, but I think it's the same sort of thing here, that they're, they're good, but as soon as people have played against them a bit, you'll find out ways to beat them. Yeah. Um, like Tom says, once you split them up, they're just normal dwarfs. I think I think armies that can beat them are things like Chaff Warg Riders. Yeah. You've got Strength 4 on the charge... So you need sixes, okay, but you're pretty much the same number of points, but you're getting the charge in. I think more riders would be a good also, thing. Also, if you've got strength four, they're yeah. no different whatsoever. No. So crossbows will kill them just as easily. Um, any any of the kind of orc armies, hunter orcs, yeah, hunter so orcs will rinse them, yeah. I think. So I think anything with strength four will do well. Yeah. It's hard for strength three armies. I think elves will struggle. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to see more dwarfs in yeah. the kind of top table. Dane, Dane's amazing. Yeah. Dane, you're right about Dane. Dane's incredible, um, but he's just the he's your kind of linchpin. If you yeah. put, if you kill Dane, cut the head off the snake, and he he he's good, but he dies in exactly the same way any other hero dies. Yeah, it's more for. I mean, you you play as a berserker player, so it's not really a problem to kill things that are hard to kill. Whereas if you're an elf player, you have to invest so much to kill someone like Dane that it's probably not even worth trying. Hmm. Because you have to trap him, but you don't have the numbers to go and trap him. And you have to roll a load of sixes. You probably have to burn loads of might to get those sixes by fours to kill him. Even with your hero. So it just feels like a, a wasted well, effort. Though, el elves will be able to um, beat him because of the and Court. Well, they can win the fight. Trap him, win I don't the fight and just keep winning the fight with your off blades. I might yeah, I might take my, you a few my, my tactic with Dane would be to nullify. It would be to try to just stop him winning fights. Yeah, and just so immobilise him. Immobilise yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, spellcasters should do fine against them. I don't think they're going to um, walk all over the table. I think you're going to have some really cool armies. Yes. Because people will want to play with the toys. Whenever they arrive, people will want to use the blister <laughs> and the chariot and the ram riders. And those armies are, I think, relatively going to be awful. Yeah. Because you're going to have so many points invested in all these cool toys. I think maybe it would be really good having the dwarf front line and then the elves with Thranduil, with Dane, would be a good army. <laughs> they could jump over. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't the dwarves can scream, what are you doing? We had a really good defensive <laughs> position. They're certainly not... They're, they're not going to break the game and win every tournament. That's how you get them to break their shield wall. Get elves to jump over their heads. Sort them right out. But yeah, I mean, if you don't think it's going to be fun to play with them, then just pick one of the other cool new armies. Yeah, I also think it's the, it's the new scary thing. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, and you're saying at least not in theory. And I think, you know, try them out. A lot of these rules sound scarier when you read them than they actually are on the table. Okay, uh, it's me. Yeah. David Whitaker, you guys have pretty dull Subway sandwiches. Sandwiches? No sauce. What's a sandwich? I don't know. Steak and cheese with lettuce, sweet corn, jalapenos, peppers, onions, if I'm in the mood, and lashings of Southwest sauce every time. And thank you for your question. Is that David. a question? How is the washing machine? Yeah, how is your washing machine? Anyway, uh, and we're saying it? that because we apologise for you. He was upset. Yeah. <laughs> There's no mention of the washing machine in the Do you have a favourite Subway? Um, I don't really eat a Subway. Oh, I eat a Subway. My favourite subways are the free ones that we have at tournaments in yeah, Titans and at yeah. Stockport. <laughs> I would go for a, I would go for the turkey and salad normally. Yeah, I think, yeah like absolutely. That. Tim Hines, hello. My question this week is: Does the white wag benefit from the fell site rule like the rest of the other well wags? No. No. Doesn't have the fell site rule. Sorted it. Smashed it. You get back up. It's a good point, though. What is? Does it? Well, in the new one. Yeah. Oh, does it in the new one? Does it in the new one? I doubt it. I mean, it's a bit messed up, the white wag. You probably can't smell it. It's a now. she! She can't smell much. She's the matriarch. Now. The white wag. Terror. Deadly user. Deadly union. Packmaster. Raging beast. No. And triceratops rider. No, it doesn't have fell sight at all. So, no. Nope. The other, nope. Do the other ones are his scouts. You go, what's over there, guys? What's over there, guys? And then they go, yes, it's a wizard. And they go, go and eat it. It's, it's either a Mickey Mouse or a black woman from a Tom and Jerry cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which. Moving swiftly on, Quinn Duggan, well, considering you two are making the effort to make a comeback. We are. We are. We are. That's true as well. Sorry, I wasn't looking at you. Have you heard the thing about aiming at the elbow? Have you seen this? Yeah. It's a good high five. If you look at the elbow. I'm looking. It, it was, it was. Okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 
Oh. Right, if you look at someone's elbow when you do a high five, you get good contact. Try it. It stings. Yeah, because it's good contact. <laughs> Anyway, um, yes, we've made a comeback, and you're, you guess you should throw your hat in too. Um, having, after having such a good time at Arlecon, I decided I'm going to get back into the Hobbit hobby after not playing for almost a year. I'm most definitely coming to a re-desolation of Stockport, and true to form, I'm bringing you a list question. Hand this over to Jamie now if he's there, yes, okay. Angel points. Uh, Elf twins with horse and armour, one of them is the leader, nine ranges of Arnor, four with spear. Halbarad, twelve ranges of Arnor, Arnor six with spear. Arathorn, 12 ranges of Arnold, 6 with spear, 8 ranges of the north, that's 20 might, 45 models, and 23 dead to break. This left, leaves me with 10 points left. What do you think I should spend it on? Find the broken. Giving out spears to the rangers of the north and Halbred, mm -hmm. giving Halbred a horse, mm -hmm. or giving the twins bows? Find the broken. Find the broken. Also, would you be okay with me using Dunedain miniatures for rangers of the north for ease of recording might, will, and fate? Not a chance. Um, Alright, so the list. I, it's a, a standard. Um, range of the North list. I think they're good to an extent and they'll win games but then they'll come up against something like Imran and Horde with defence six and lose um, because there's so many numbers and they'll chop you down. But it can't be good fun. Um, Which of the twins is the leader? Yeah. <laughs> big question. Big question. With the extra ten points, I mean if you have a conversion of Halbred on a horse then that yeah. would be cool. Of those it's the horse, the yeah. horse for the love of God get the horse. Yeah. Spears are going to be re largely irrelevant because you've got low numbers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, throughout the whole books, horses are way too cheap. So, you would, if you ever have the choice, you would yeah. always, 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 always get the horse. Even if you have to convert them. And that's horse. actually where the old adage, horses are too cheap, comes from. What adage? The adage, horses are too cheap. Okay. It comes from strategy okay. about really. Yeah. Okay. Um, the miniatures for Range of the North. Um, yeah, as long as the T.O. and and the... I, I wouldn't have a problem. I don't think I can tell the difference, right. to be honest. Like, I think that... Hasn't the dinner then got a helmet on? Is that right? And the ranger no, have got the, hoods? The, no, it's the other way around. Is it? The dinner See? Day. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I've had people not really know the Dunedain warriors when I've used the Dunedain um, heroes when I've used them and don't know the difference between them and the rangers of Arnold mm. because they look very similar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's There's always some little git who goes in and you go, right, I'm going to ride them down. They go, hello, strike. You go, with who? You go, this guy. Go, it's a ranger. No, yeah, it's my dinner dame. So as long as, <laughs> as long as your opponent, it's clear for yeah. your opponent. I don't think it will be very fun to play with or against. Mm. You just shoot everyone and you'll, you'll win if you can outshoot them and, and you'll you lose won. if you can't. And those games aren't particularly fun for either player. So... But, you know, you might have fun with it. it. It depends. But, yeah, I mean, it's a very shooty army. But in some of the scenarios, you can't really stand back and shoot. So you'll just have to get in there. Uh, okay, next question. Nathan Van Til. Wow, <coughs> it was about time, fellows. It was nice to get the band back together. Yeah. You weren't looking. No, but... Look at the elbow. I don't, I don't want to. Was it hurt? It hurts. We can do a wrong hand one. <laughs> Um, with James and Jamie joining for the first speed friend in question in a long while. Now, with the rules being out for Iron Hills Dwarves, one thing I was noticing was the rule for the Iron Hills Dwarves Warriors. The rule says they have to be touching two. It's like these are popular or yeah. something. Like that. The rule says they have to be touching two other models. Do you think it was intentional to word it where they have to be in base contact with two other models to get the bonus? Probably. Yes. <laughs> After analysing the film more, it makes sense in my brain because of the way they formed <laughs> up and such. But I would wonder if they went for a single Iron Dwarves to all have the... Uh, I would wonder if they meant for a single line of dwarves to all have the plus one to defence. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's meant to represent the two on either side going across. Well, so you need it on both sides. That's why you need yeah. two. So, but a single line of dwarves does get it. Yeah, but not the guys on the end. Oh, yeah. But they're they like, can be attacked like on the side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That kind of makes sense. I think um, makes sense. Yes. Otherwise, <laughs> I like the idea that somewhere in Nottingham, Jay's going, Oh, no, I wrote two! I wrote two! Oh, I meant one! Or seven! <laughs> I was like, you know, I, Back away into set. Yeah, I think my gut feeling says yes, probably. Yeah. I'm sure they check the book very carefully. I think if there was like, you know, Iron Hills Dwarfs are Courage 4 in the book and 5 in the reference, that's the sort of thing that could slip through. I think in the special yeah. rules, Rose says they back away into 2. When they're in base contact with 2, it's probably going to be 2. Yeah. 
Okay, on to S Earnshaw 100 or Cernshaw 100. I think you want to answer Wars' question then. Uh, uh, did you move up? No. Wars' um, question was at the bottom of the screen. You yes. ignored it. Don't drink it. Wah! Guys, not going to lie. Missing Ardacon at the last moment has been like drinking from a well of despair. But watching Speak Friend and Question again went a long way to bring me back. I was even cleaning my Morgan Knights while I watched. I bought them for Chaos and Arda, but lost all interest when the plans went sideways. Um, so this is big, didn't see myself working on them so soon. And what a show! Nearly as good as the planter. The boys were back in town and as strong as ever. <laughs> even down to Jamie having his customary kind of pop while filming. You Diet Coke yeah. fiend! Yeah, he so needs to get product placement, sponsorship, cash. They will pay so much. Yeah, Diet Coke are big into us. Uh, this week's question for the Loop is still strong. James, well done! Thanks! Mm. Um, from all the chats I've had with people from all over the world to watching vlogs about Ardacon, it's the success that we're all hoping for. But now you've lived Ardacon, what advice would you give to yourself if you could time travel? I could time travel? Um, I wouldn't, you know when I shaved my head and just had the bit on top, I wouldn't do that. That'd be, that was a misstep, I think. Um, what advice would I give? I think I would say, this is, this is how I could just go, right, what advice would I give myself? Um, more free beer. Uh, I, would, I would give myself the advice of having more people to help. Correct. Um, I think, I, I think that would be good to have uh, more people there in various areas. Um, I think he needs a, he needs an, a, a I need a dedicated person not playing at the event to help run it. Yes. Even if they're my lackey. Um, and you need someone like that. I think Dan Emwes did an amazing job or of stepping more up. More than one person. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, Christian did seem to be yes. giving me a lot of help, as I remember. Yes. <laughs> but, um, I would also... Eat more. Eat more. <laughs> and yeah. sleep more. Try and not fall down. I would um, change the schedule slightly. Yes. Um, so this is where it's, it does with me, I don't know. Um, so that things ended earlier on the Saturday. Night. I would probably swap around the evening activities with the morning activities of Saturday. So the tournament started at 9am and finished at 6pm and then you had all the presentations and stuff in the evening. Um, yeah. I don't know what else I would do. What would you do, Tom, if you were me? From that, I did have something. I would have prepped things so I wasn't having lack of sleep the week before as well for the scenery. Mm. I'd Get that done I, I made an incredible effort, I think, yeah. last week. You did. You um, did. Doing all the trees and, and all the hearts. The photos you did were great for the group, yeah. but you could have had better time spent just what making photos it. Photos for the group? Just putting up oh, I'm doing so it. Is this me or him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think if I'd have if I'd have done more of that in advance, yeah. uh, possibly getting other people to yes. um, help, whatever. It just would have been more. Would, the tables really. looked amazing. Yeah. Though, I thought humbly. Humbly. <laughs> Uh, I thought the tables looked really good. Yeah, it was it? good getting the other um, groups to bring tables yes. on. That was very cool. Uh, but I think I've done the a lot mats of that worked now. well. Yeah, the mats were very good. I've done a lot of that now. I've mm. got that scenery, I think, um, <laughs> somewhere. So I, I won't have to put um, all that what stuff. I would get Games Workshop to come back. Yep. I would get SPG Magazine to come back. They were, they were, they were really good. They were, the they were really good. Handsome guys. Yeah. Shame about the um, taller guy's shirt. Yes. Are you taller? No. No. Yes. Yeah? Are you taller? I don't know. I've got socks on. Uh, I think you are. Yeah, you've yeah. got that pointy bit of hair. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> generation shift. Get him back. Yeah. What a guy. And yeah. John. And um, it was um, Jay Finnegan and the Guild Bowl. I'd move it all to a travel lodge. lodge. <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth the McEwen. Um What else would we change? Um, I'd win more. We, we'd, ask the, we'd ask the McCure to put a window in the room. Yeah. Oh, uh, possibly some bigger food breaks. That'd yes. be good in the evening. Yes. Um, that'd be nice. Yeah, um, and I think I think the. Yeah, I think I think the other thing is finish. Have the um, singles all in one block, so you're not doing one game on the day after. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're 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 nitpicking. It was a fantastic weekend, but we are being James. <laughs> being overly critical about his event here. He also asked, what were some of the biggest unexpected moments of joy you took away from Seeing the event? Seeing SBG issue Yeah, when you left, that was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, when I left. Um, I think James would say, standing on the stage and seeing 200 yes. SBG players, or 150 SBG players, 
um, all playing from around yeah, that was the world. Incredible. The, team, I know, the team spirits were really cool yeah. from all the different teams. I know he was very excited when um, he saw Andreas, the Norwegian Viking, and Devon, I think, playing on the top yeah, table yeah. at one point, and that, I know, made him feel like the endeavour was worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Because he had someone from DCHL, the kind of YouTube guys, yeah. DCHL and Norwegian Viking in England playing against each other, which never would have happened yeah. at another tournament. So I think I think that that sense of um, it all working, it all coming together for him, would have been a huge yeah. deal. And all the dwarves selling out was cool to help GW yeah. on their first um, foray into the new Forge World resin yeah. of the Hobbit. They're just, I think, just making it happen. Yeah. Well, that's not really an unexpected thing, is it? Um, oh, yeah, unexpected. The German? Unexpected that the Wanderers in the Wild didn't win. <laughs> yeah, he must have been staggered by that. Like James Braun finished yeah. in 99. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it. Um, uh, other unexpected things. I think he'll have said it was unexpected how tiring it was. Mm. He's done stock pots and yeah, it's yeah, yeah. tiring to an extent, but I think he hadn't realised how, how much monumental an effort he'd have to put in over It was, it was spectacular. Yeah. It was spectacularly big. It wasn't... I've heard someone say if you have a kid, um, it's, it's like if you have your second child, it's like going from having a dog to having a zoo. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that sort of thing where doing stock port and then going to this is that it's not twice as big. Yeah. Or like three times as big because of the numbers. It's ten times yeah. as big in terms of the effort. Of it. Just the... I mean, we run a tournament, and for me, just the the organisation of like um, your lanyards and your your round pair, you know mm -hmm. that that kind of tedious admin yeah. stuff that you'd have to sort out. That would have just driven me potty. Yeah. Um, so, potty for our international viewers <laughs> is a term that British people used to say in the seventies. <laughs> anyway, yes, it was a fantastic event. Um, I, yeah, for me, I think the schedule would be the big thing that I tweak. I think that'd be my one, yeah. and getting people to help. It would be great to see how the main man himself thinks of the event. And once again, the West Coast, thank you. The West Coast hobbits couldn't be more proud of the splendid work you did. Thanks, guys. Uh, the Dark Lord approves. Don't be surprised if he invites you on the team of nine. I, what, what does that mean? You, I'm going to be a ring wraith. I, what is that? Is that good? You can't be a ring wraith. <laughs> you are not allowed. Not allowed. Um, not part of the club. Um, Cernshaw 100. Hi guys, seeing as you're such fans of battle companies, would you ever look at doing something like Mordheim? Uh, I've got Mordheim. Okay. I own Mordheim. Um, if you watch the Frostgrave, Frostgrave videos uh, me and Jamie did, that was all the scenery I used to have from Mordheim back in the day. I got it when it first came out and I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant game. Have you ever played Mordheim? No. Nope. You know what it is? Yes. It's the skirmish. Yeah? Oh, well. So it's yes, do you? No. no. You don't, really. I have. you talked about it's it. It's the before. skirmish version. Yeah, it was yeah. the skirmish version set in the Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. Really, really cool, really evocative, and Frostgrave is doing, filling that gap. This is the one where you had that character who went through and changed. Is that is it that one? Yeah, in, in Mordheim you have a, you have a, a um, what do call it, a warband. Yeah. That um, gain skills and all that yeah, sort of stuff as injuries. they go through. Yeah, and get yeah, injuries and die. that one. And it's a, the same with Frostgrave. Yeah. So, um, I, we're, we're not likely to do it. Because um, I've, I've got my Mordheim models here, actually, that we use for Frostgrove. I think I think your best bet of that is Jamie. Yeah. Um, Jamie's the sort of person who loves getting into different games and seems to have a relatively decent amount of time to play them. So I wouldn't. I'd be. I wouldn't. I'd be up for it because we've got the scenery here. Mm -hmm. stuff at some point, um, who knows? Maybe on a Let's Try Tuesday or something. You might see. It. Okay. It's a great game, though. Go and try it. Yes. Uh, Tom Muir. Um, hooray, the boys are back in town. We are back in town in Twickenham. The town is Twickenham. Stoked to have the show, show back, fellas. You have been missed. Yeah. My question for this week is, how do you plan on using the new Iron Hills Dwarves in a pure Iron Hills list or allied with other forces such as Mercury Theme? How do you think they will be most competitively played? Many thanks for your time and effort on the channel. I think I'd have them backing away into two other ones. Ideally, or seven. Um, yeah, I think we talked about this, but yeah. yeah. Uh, either just loads of the Iron Hills Dwarves with Dane and Captains, or with some with Thrandall and Merkwood Elves. You are laughing. Are you reading the next? Right. It'll get to you. Yeah, I think we've covered a <laughs> lot of it. Um, but it's that kind of stuff. Is it over there yet? No. 
Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it arriving? It's not arrived yet, but I'm, I'm the whole confident that I know what you're talking about. Um, go over here. Um, yeah, so I think we've dealt with that to a certain extent. Um, I think pure iron heels on foot will be very competitive. Yes. And, but yes, I equally <laughs> think some wizards and some elves might help. Yes. So Damien has gone to the loo in an unsurprising twist. That's why he did. So next up we have Landibert. Hi guys, first time posting on a speak friend and question video. What do you have to do, Jamie? Uh, you're in the loop. Um, now you've asked a question this week, you have to ask one next week. Do it. It's a little more aggressive than normal, Jamie. <laughs> I've got a question regarding Gildor and Glory. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and his ability to upgrade Wood Elf Warriors. Do the Noldrin Exiles, the upgraded Wood Elves, count towards the Eregian and Rivendell or Mirkwood and Lothlorien list? I'd assume they count as Regian and Rivendell, but I'm actually not sure how upgrades work in this regard, as I believe this is the only place where you can upgrade a model not in the same list. Correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. There's, here. there's an FAQ. So basically, it's been. I FAQ. haven't finished my question. Okay, I'm answering the question. The errata regarding <laughs> him isn't really clear on this either. It is. It says he can lead Wooden Warriors and may upgrade any in his force. Wouldn't that be important to clarify for tournaments, which you can only play one faction? I'm like Nova. Sure, the FAQ, FAQ said for his warband. But maybe I'm maybe yeah, it, It's a different. I think it's a different issue. It's the, the the FAQ thing is he can upgrade the Wood Elves in his warband. Yeah. He I think he's saying if he takes them, do they count as being from a separate faction? For things like Nova. Because you're drawing on models from two factions. And I think the answer to that is no. Yeah, I think the, the account as being in the Aragon yeah, and, and yeah. Lothlorien list for that. Yeah, I think if you take them for that, they count as being yeah. in, in Rivendell, yes. I think. Yes, they do. Because um, that's do they count towards the regular? He's a special thing that he can pull into his list. Yeah. So yeah, um, and you can only do the ones in his warband. I think yes. that's in the FAQ. Yeah. So yeah, um, you're you're all good to go on that count. Cool. And welcome. In jam. <laughs> um, Matt Patterson. Hi guys. I'm just curious on your thoughts about the new dwarves. I imagine that at the next tournament there'll be twenty odd players with different coloured Iron Hills armies. They might be the same colour. What some suggestions on other armies that would be equally as cool to take? Good to see you both back together. Thanks. Thank you. Boil! Yeah. <laughs> Azog. Azog. Um, yeah, Gundabats to fight them. Strength four, ancient enemies. I say yeah. deal with defense, oh, eh? You'll lose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? Gundabats will lose. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I want to get my the ogres in there. need fives on you and you need sixes on them. Yeah, I've got trolls on the end, chucking them about, what smashing them up. Trolls, good and bad trolls. Oh, new, new, oh yeah, new, new, new good to bad can win. More like good to good. Yeah, but current good to bad can't win. I think they could win. Well, it depends if you're using the doors and someone good's using the gundabads. Unnecessary. Don't touch me. <laughs> I don't want to after that last <laughs> period. Um, <laughs> what other cool, equally as cool to take? Um, uh, the Nazgul. The Nazgul are cool. You can. Mm. Uh, I'm trying not to get too spoilery, but all nine Nazgul and the Necromancer and one of their friends is an army. Is a mm. big army now mm. in itself, and I think could do very, very well. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. As a, you could have a eleven model army that um, I think could com com compete, be very, very cool, and it is a very, very different. Kind of all here, aren't they? Yeah. We're not going to do it here, we're not going to do two spoilers, but the, the Nazgul are unique. Mm -hmm. The Nazgul of Dol Guldur are unique now in the game and the way they work, and I think mm -hmm. they would be really, really cool. Take gold with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that would be equally as cool. Okay. Cool, uh, moving on. In Infinite Remains. Hi guys, first off, well done at the recent tournaments and cleaving a path for your oppositions. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, just been watching for your battle reports, both on here and over on HGG, and I wonder if there's any news on future battle reports, and if we shall see the continuation of the journey of the Fellowship with the Two Towers book. It's Keep all me. up the great work it's with regards to Alex Herku. Ah, it's all me as Jamie. Yeah, it. Be careful, has it? Has it? Is four four, four tisons tisons up. Yeah. yeah, no, it's up. It's happening! Yes, <laughs> now, yeah. right now. It's happening as we. Sit. Yeah, Jamie's doing a great job. I think on that. Jamie's leading that with Harry. So yes. yes, look for all sorts of two towers goodness coming to you soon. Whoop whoop. 
Uh, oh, it's me, Greenwood again. Another thing, Kirdan, I kind of like him. I have used him together with Numenor in the past, and he has fulfilled his purpose of adding defensive magic and providing some fight six in crucial areas. Had he had an Elven Blade, he would have been really useful. As um, it was, he died. He's okay, Blinding Light's good. Shh, I'm gonna get to the caveats. Blinding Light's good, and that's about it. He's basically there for Blinding Light for me, and there are better options, but it doesn't mean he's rubbish. There are just much better things. Yeah. He's a bit rubbish. Yeah, he could be better. <laughs> Isn't he, is he unarmed? Yeah, for 80 points he could be better. <laughs> he's 80 points and he's unarmed. <laughs> yeah. And he can't take a weapon. Yeah. But yeah, they're the last. same. <laughs> That's very <laughs> well point. <laughs> Alfred's, think... un Alfred's unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gurdon's pap. <laughs> and, it's like, and you can always find a good reason for him. Yes, aura yeah. command's good. You can get aura command. But yeah, it's but like it, just... he will never have the will left to then. Do <laughs> exactly. Others. Is it no? Is he? Is he? Off, he, he is he dismay? No, he's command, isn't he? Is he? To the book. If he's dismay, I'm taking him in everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's command. command's good. Or if command's really good. Yeah, I think that's his other USP, isn't it? I thought it was dismay, but I could be wrong. He's ribbon, though, isn't he? Yeah. There he is. Command. Oh, he's got both. He's got both. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, but what's he cast them on? Or of command on a two plus? Yeah. I take it all back. He's good. Is he? Shove him with Minas Tirith or someone rubbish, and he's pretty good. Yeah. With chaff troops. Yeah, definitely for ninety Shh. points. Shh. Yes, he's well worth it. Don't take Sarah and the wise. I think he's all right with. I don't know. Take him with. If you could have him on a horse and take him with all Martin Rohan. Yeah, but you can't. Yeah, Tom. I know. Shh. Take him with. He'd be good in the in that range of the North list we just heard. Yeah. Theoretically. He's mm. probably not gonna be that good. If you're gonna if you need Orb Command, take Saruman the Wise. If you need Blinding Light, take Galadriel or Gandalf. And if you need what's his other one? Or of Dismay. I mean you don't need Thrandor. Orb of Dismay. But yeah, Thrandor. Done. Yeah, Thrandor for the same points is I would infinitely take, better. Well, all three of the others together. Rather than taking good. Okay. Anyway. At the expense of all other models as well. Yes. Yeah, he's not that bad. That's a challenge for someone. Win a tournament with Kirdan. Uh, Matt M. Hey guys, great to see the original duo back together again. Uh, it was nice meeting you all at Nova. Thank you. It does apply to us. Mm -hmm. He must be talking about us. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'll be able to see you guys there next year. Fingers crossed. My question this week is how good do you think the new Iron Hill Dwarfs will be? <laughs> they seem good on paper, but that doesn't always translate to being good on the table. I agree. We agree. Yes. Moving on. Andreas, <laughs> the Norwegian Banking. Great to have you back. And thank you for a fantastic weekend at Articon. You're very welcome. Thank you for the chocolate. Yes. Lily Come to more tournaments. <laughs> Lily Ayo. Yeah, she thought it was great. Better than Freddo's in her opinion. What? Um, I'm Don't just, lie, just yes. to cheer him up. I had a Freddo today. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you earn the right to have a Do I want? Okay. Uh, nice to see you sporting our team colours on the channel. Um, I'm kind of on. James is wearing his t-shirt. Yes. I believe that's what that means. Yes. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. On to you. King Bonesai. I'm sure he'll be back next year to smash people up. <laughs> oh yes I will. So they, they must have said that King Bonesai will be back at Nova. Ah. Sure. Oh yes I will, but not with Legolas. He helps, but it was not the best choice. Next year I will be back and better. Yana Durinio Amenu! Good, good. Uh, we have more King Bone as I. Shall I keep going then? Yeah. At Nova, there was a bit of a target on our backs. Well, I felt like that. Well, I had felt like that. I really wanted to stop you guys. Ah, uh, Jamie. Jamie, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it was my first tournament, so I can't say I did poorly, but next year I will make sure that my target. that target is my target. And every other's too. Thanks for that. <laughs> Ouch. I found aiming for the high bar is the best because even if you don't hit it, you will go higher than if you set up for your safe zone and the chances of hitting it are worlds higher too. That's an excellent point. Do a kaya na durino. I agree with that. Aim for the thing you can't do yet and then learn how to do it. Uh, more from King Bonzo. Jamie, your best moment was against Tim Hickson. Mine too. Yeah, my best moment was uh, when I think no, no, it's you, you. Against him. Yes, yeah. He built. <laughs> he had. <laughs> what? Uh, Tim had the, the big army, didn't he? Yeah, it was a fortress table, yeah. right? Yeah. 
and uh, that allowed Jamie to get the better of him in the end. Yeah. But yeah, apparently it was a really tough game for Jamie. Yeah. Um, Tim's a very good player. Yes, Why? indeed. Lots of experience. Has pretty much all the. He's got all the models. He has all, all the models. models. Yeah, it's quite incredible. <laughs> so yeah, um, on to David Whitaker. Have either of you chaps ever seen or been interested in seeing one of the many Hobbit fan edits? These tend to involve trimming scenes and removing some plots to create a truer version of the story. I've seen the Maple Films edit entitled Gerald Tolkien's The Hobbit, which I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed. It takes all three films and trims them into one four-hour epic dropping Tariel. Disaster. Radagast. 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 Probably intentional of Whitaker. The whole Dol Gulder subplot, etc and make some very clear edits to blend everything together. I found it great alternative viewing experience, although I'm still all about the originals and extended cuts. I probably would watch it. I just haven't really stumbled. I've seen the them. Tolkien edit, which is the famous one available on a selection of legal sites, mm -hmm. um, which I watched out of curiosity. I, d I, don't, I don't fundamentally agree with it, because I, I like a lot of the changes. You just like Tara. I like Tara, but I, the Dog Gulder subplot, I think, is one mm -hmm. of the amazing things. This, yeah. this is the wonderful thing about it, I think, that, um, the Tolkien edit, there's a quote that he said where um, the guy who did it said the Dol Gordor plot was the most superfluous and irrelevant to the story and so the easiest to remove. Mm. And then someone else has put the Dol Gordor plot and made it into a film yeah. that's 45 minutes long, which is a really good film. Yeah. Um, so it's all about opinion. But I, I think it's interesting. It was interesting watching a film version of it as if it was in the... Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it... As I've said before, I think the story of the Hobbit films is better than the story mm. of the Hobbit But it is easy to cut out, right? Because... It's another part of a story. Yeah, but it. But the thing is, in the, in the, the final, the rings, you could you could take. Do you need a bit about the two midges going to the mountain? You just need three really? and that's it. Yeah. So you can take out all the rest. So. And that that is what the Hobbit does, right? Yeah. That's exactly what happens. That it would it would keep it would keep following Frodo and Sam all the way. Yeah. Aragorn would run off. Yeah. And then at the end, he'd just come back. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, that was all right. And that, that's what happens. Gandalf rides off at Mirkwood in this fan yeah. edit and then turns up at the Battle of Five Armies. Brilliant. It's like, that's rubbish. Yeah, exactly. All right. G Pogs! Which is Gary. Not really a question. What do you think this is? Speak friend and not really a question? Just a comment. The amazing Canadian with the terrible dice rolls was me, Gareth! Oh, Gareth! I had a great time at no. Was that playing against James then? And me. And you. In the doubles. Oh, no. No, no, no. In the single... Oh, I think he played James. Yeah, he did. He had, the nice, yeah, yeah. he had terrible rolls in both. Yeah. Uh, I we'll a... just say he was the worst dice roller at Nova. Lovely, lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time at Nova and a great time playing in both doubles and singles. My dice rolls have not improved since Nova. I went, I went zero and four at the last event for our league. I think it's time for some new dice, or better yet, for the Jedi Master James to train me in the ways of the Jedi dice Don't, dice. don't call him a Jedi. He, um, he'll, he says, that he, do you want a drink? You say, yeah, and you go, what... What do you want? And then he turns the dice over. That's how he does it. <laughs> when he's pointing over there, he's, he's moving the dice. Yeah. It's not Jedi mind tricks, it's just cheating. It's done with his fingers. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Bridato Capelli, uh, working away from home for three months with little to do, but troll YouTube led me to your channel. Oh, scrolling through. Yeah, okay. Um, that doesn't I've, mean troll. No. <laughs> I've never been interested in wargaming at all before. But the bat reps, particularly the battle companies ones, really entertain me. So I hit eBay and I bought up a number of models and both Lord of the Rings Minds of Moria, good choice, and the Hobbit Goblin Town box sets, very good. I got home last Friday and for our first evening together with my girlfriend it was a game. Um, and we had a go at playing the first two scenarios from the Minds of Moria and she enjoyed it as much as I did. She, well, if she was, brilliant. Otherwise, what did she want from you? Did she want you to watch Maiden Chelsea? Um, so, from probably your only Bulgarian fan... I don't think our only Bulgarian <laughs> fan will know what Maiden Chelsea no. is. <laughs> um, so, from your probably only Bulgarian fan, thank you for your videos, for keeping me sane while I'm away from home, and for the inspiration uh, to give this wonderful game a go. So, to ask a question for the next episode, uh -huh, this episode, how did you both get into the game? Do you remember what the scenario was that you played? Thanks and keep the videos coming. Okay. Um, can we? Re I don't know what I've done. I've deleted this comment. <laughs> deleted the internet. You've deleted the episode. Who's that? Um, awesome news about wait. the hobby. That's great. So uh, you're gonna do? Oh, I can do James's because he talks about it a lot. He was making a. We yeah. should do ours, surely. This week. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I, yeah, I was really enjoying the theme of um, the ranges of the north on this 
what was it? It was some some online computer game. Yeah, that someone was making a beta of. Yes, he was, he was testing do play, it. Play testing, but then he found the One Ring, and there were some lovely chaps on the One Ring, which made him think he should buy a grey company models army, which he did, and then he painted up Halberad and some Rangers of the North badly and played with those. In his words, badly, because he's repainting everything. And they all look very nice. I know how you got into it. Go on. Um, you, Jamie. Oh. <laughs> Jamie was... Well, I think he was walking along the street and he walked past the Games Workshop that had You're some right. of his friends you in it. You smashed it. And um, he went in and... I said, oh, do you want to join in? And he was like, no, nerds! I might have added that bit. Yeah. And um, ran away screaming. Yeah. Uh, no, but I think that he then played a game and he won, which he's now convinced they let him win. Yeah. And he got him hooked and he bought some dwarfs that he Oh, these painted. are the dwarf rangers. Yeah, dwarf rangers that he painted so badly he threw them away. <laughs> uh, that's how he got into it. How did you get into it, Tom? How did you get, uh, you get into the... How did you get into the game? I had a friend at... What? Yeah, no, Amazing. A friend at secondary school who played it, so I played with him. But then I, so your dad didn't get it myself because I I didn't I got like two pounds pocket money. I was like I cannot afford this, um, so I didn't get into it. And then I t talked to Christopher about it, and then he was keen, and he got some for his my friend Christopher, other friend Christopher, other um, friend, yeah, two friends, and once he had it, we played some games with it. We enjoyed it, and then I decided to get the Minds of Moria set, and from there it went. Look at you now. And then you did Warhammer-y. I did. I played Warhammer when I was a teenager and was uh, still into it. Was bullied for it. <laughs> um, and was still into it when the Fellowship of the Ring came out and got the, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring box set for Christmas in 2001. The first game I ever played was the Weathertop scenario in a Games Workshop. Um, oh yeah. The first game I played was in a Games Workshop with Christopher, we played the um, Last Alliance battle. And there were about five people on each side. Mm, just like the film? Yeah. Right. No, I was in five, oh, physical five, five, people, models. five physical people, and I was in charge of some elves. I remember the first time I nearly played it, but I didn't play it. Was it I think I've said told you before at the cinema, when they had... Um, oh, they came at the cinema? Yeah, when... Fellowship of the Ring, I don't know if it was everywhere, but certainly in Hemel Hempstead, um, when you went to the Odeon, you know, you know you've got the big bit where lots of people hang out mm -hmm. before with the food and, and everything, friends. and you've got loads of time to wait yeah. and do stuff. Yeah, They didn't have it there. Right, brilliant. But the bit after you give someone your tickets, they had it and nail the screens. Yeah, I know. Like, why that? They had um, the Games Workshop were there set mm. up with, I think it was Alan Hen maybe. Mm. Um, and the models, and you can play it. And I, I've never seen any worse idea in in no, history. People avoiding it. Well, they, but you're going there on a Friday night <laughs> to go to the cinema. Nerds, nerds, look at you! And like, have you got a spare hour? <laughs> like, no, I'm going to see a film. When does it start? Five minutes. Oh. Probably not. And you come out. Do you want to stop for an hour? And it's like a really good idea in principle. Like going. Um, you know, go see put the film and then play the game. Yeah. But you know, put it in the foyer or whatever. Yeah. And I've never, I've never known anyone do that sort of thing before. But they certainly tried it out near me. But yeah, I didn't play that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, there we go. Very good. Uh, Philip Curran, back in the loop. James, have you done anything with your smell since purchasing it? Uh, uh, I think he's hidden it. Yeah. He hid it for he a while. He hid it and didn't talk about it. That's what he did since purchase. And he hid it and talked about it a lot. <laughs> well, oh yeah, talked about it a lot on video. Not yeah. In, at home. And then he gave it to Jane? To give to him. Didn't he? He yeah. got it as a Christmas present. He had a video of yeah. him getting it as a Christmas present. If you don't think of your smirk. Put it in a... Left it in its box. Took the Bilbo out of it. <laughs> I've painted the Bilbo, yeah. <laughs> Done a conversion. Um, I've copied, since copied your conversion. I think Smaug is similar on the painting list to my Harad army. Or further down. <laughs> okay, uh, James Miniature Space. You know what? No, I don't. Sounds aggressive. No, no. <laughs> I found the Balrog easier to assemble than Gandalf foot and mounted. <laughs> I did not know that. Okay, guys, question. New Dwarfs versus Old Dwarfs. Nightmare. Uh, the round shields wind me up so much since the Hobbit film. Um, but I've nearly 1,200 points of durance, folk. Good effort. What do you th guys think? How do you tie in the two together in both aesthetic design and gameplay? Khazadgard, Vault Wardens, having a mixed army. You've got 1,200 points. I, String. 
It's true. <laughs> yeah, I, it depends what you're going for. Um, How do you tie the two together? In terms of aesthetic design and gameplay. Um, gameplay, I mean, the Vault Wardens are great. They're just if you clog up the middle with them and then have, I don't know, hazard on the sides to kill stuff. Would yeah, I mean, work. They're, they're meant to be dwarves from, from different er yeah. eras and different areas anyway, so they yeah. shouldn't look like a But I guess Vault Wardens are the same okay. because of the shields. The shields are the same mm -hmm. shape, so they look. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And Khazards wouldn't have but the, shields. The, but the old dwarves are the, the round ones. Yeah, he's saying yeah. he doesn't like the mix of the round I mean, shields with the. Yeah. Well, you yeah. chuck some hexagonal shields yeah. in Erebor and really yeah, go yeah. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you tie the two together? In gameplay, yeah, well, alright, tactically. Um, you would. <sighs> it's useful having some dwarves with the shield to shield in the middle. And the same with Vault Wardens, then use Khazard Guard on the flanks. So generally, or oh, Iron Guard. Iron Guard for sure on the flanks. They're really good. I think the. Um, we might go for a Ballista. Mm. For a bit. For Durin's folk to protect them a bit mm. against the shooting. That might be fun. Um, some of the heroes from, yeah. from Iron Hills are Beastie better. One. You get Dane in there. Dane's pretty good. Oh, you're putting them together with the Iron Hills? I think so. How do you tie them together in both aesthetic? Does but is it, this. Is that alright? Yeah. Oh, are they talking about... Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, George old sorry. Um, I, but I wouldn't. It. That's how I'd do it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. I'd, I'd stick with Eugene's folk or have an Iron Hills. No, now you've got Dane out properly, because I would, I would have mixed old-style Dane with some old dwarves before you can get to <laughs> so it together. Put both Danes in. Yeah, <laughs> double Dane. Dane old and new. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Middle Earth SPG Island. Woo! Content. Congrats, James, on Arlequin's success. Oh, thank you. I'm already counting the days to the next one. It's, it's pretty tough. It's 365. It's pretty tough when you don't know the date yet. Yeah. My question is this. I'm. You should be counting down the days, technically. Not counting the days. Wow. Day one, two. Wake up. Three. <laughs> uh, my question is this. I'm going to run a Thranduil's Hall's Iron Hills Army my next toy. What would you recommend to include for a competitive list? Dane. Thranduil. Cheers, Stephen. Iron Hills Dwarves and Merkwood Elves with Glaives done. Well, oh, Glaives. Glaives behind the Dwarves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And That'd be bows. Good. Glaives and Bows. Glaives and Bows. Um, you even put some Merkwood Rangers in there behind the Dwarves. They work well. I've run that them. quite a lot with Warriors Variable. Yeah. Merkwood Rangers behind that would work. Dwarves. You can't see them to shoot at them, so you have to shoot the um, excessively tough um, wall. Um, so that's what I would do. So many questions. So many questions. James Winnett Space, important one. Let me be serious for a moment on the subject of rule books. GW makes the same misassumption as the music industry did pre iTunes. Something to do with piracy. But for a long time. I think I'm going to read the question. Yeah, but I'm just seeing what it is first before I talk about it. It's a new twist on the true kind of question. Uh, basically, the question is, should we have the rules for free? Um, I would be a big um, fan of having the rules for free, but, um, yeah, I mean, if Games Workshop can make, if they feel they make more money by selling the rules with the game, then I guess that's why they do it. Whether they'd get more people coming in if the rules were free and then you had more money to spend on the models, I don't know. But the, actually, the new rulebook for a big hardback rulebook isn't a bad the fifty pound one I thought was too much for the last one, and I didn't initially get the big hardback rule book. I just wanted the one in the minds of Moria set. They're also doing um, they're doing deals now. <laughs> they're doing deals all yeah. over the place. The the book is it, the rule book and that book for sixty five quid, I think, mm -hmm. which is really good. Mm -hmm. So um, it, there's some stuff free as well, like yeah. the profiles and stuff yeah. were free. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, in an ideal world, yes, they should be free, but. They're no, not. No. Say Levy. Yeah. Say you will. Say you won't. Say you'll do well or won't. Say you're true. Say to me. Won't you say? Say Levy. Okay. New Zealand Hobby League. Um, Matthew Ridgely, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, hey guys, great to see you back again. Uh, your SPGs have been packed up tonight. They will be on their way soon. <laughs> to the uh, correct address. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> that's not. Don't. Joke, that's not about you. That's, that's not a risk. Uh, it's a. It's a different one. 
I was wondering how the GVHL goes about recruiting new players, either dragging all ones out of the woodwork or encouraging players to take up the game for the first time. Here in New Zealand, 40k and Fantasy are the most popular game systems and those scenes are so different to the SPG one. I find many of those groups reclusive and tournament shy due to the competitiveness. On the other hand, our SPG scenes friendly, inviting and fun folks. What steps do you take to encourage players to make the change or just take that leap of faith to come along to their first event? The future our game depends on it after all. Cheers. I think a lot of it's down to there's about three or four factors. One is obviously we've got a lot of people in the UK who are into wargaming or into um, the Lord of the Rings. Um, the channels help. All of the channels are in English, so people in the UK want to, to hear that. Um, but then once people have been to tournament, there are, there are people within certain gaming groups who go back and talk to their friends and gamers, whoever, and they end up coming to tournaments as well. I mean, right now we don't really need to promote stuff, particularly uh, people, so um, many people coming. People join the Facebook group yes. every single day, that as well. which is amazing. Um, so, at the moment, it's, there's just a wonderful. I mean, obviously, the stuff the Middle Earth team is, is brilliant. There's a there's a there's a fresh scene. I think it was really tricky for a couple of years when it clearly was dying, mm -hmm. um, but now, uh, I'm not to say get complacent, but certainly over here we have more tournaments than we need. Yeah. We have, you know, we're not struggling for that. We have tournaments that are no tournaments that are full non, capacity, non, and there are tournaments that are non-counting towards the local league. ones. Yeah, if you know, we have more than one tournament every two weeks. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, um, and so people just tell other people, and it's it's just spreading really, um, which is wonderful. John McConnell, lovely man. Yeah, um, is it you? All right. I think it was me, didn't you just read it? Oh, did you read it? I read that. Go on. I know you guys have a very active tournament scene over there. We do indeed. How, what's the start? It's just two every, <laughs> it's fun every two weeks. But do you ever do scenarios out the books or make your own up? I like both, but with our tournaments I've been trying to put together a few games based on the books and movies. You may have seen a couple that I posted to the GBHL Facebook page. Very cool. Um, you're probably best at asking Andreas about this. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 they are doing every single one ever made. I love doing those. That's, yes. that's where I started playing the game. It's my. It's also what I'm most excited about the new book. Mm -hmm. All the narrative scenarios. I I love doing the Fellowship campaign when we did that. Um, I really excited about trying out some of the Dark Order ones. Um, so yeah, at, at tournaments though, you said no, tournament you scene. You don't see. You don't get narrative ones, narrative ones there. Um, make up your own. Lots of people make up points match scenarios. Mm -hmm. Not many people make up narrative scenarios. We have done that. Yeah, we do it for the magazine. Um, we put a new one, and we've got more as well um, that haven't seen the light of day yet. But and so people might well do it at, yeah. at home and stuff. But you don't tend to see them. I think they've certainly got enough to be getting on with with the new book. Mm -hmm. Cool. Robert Camp, welcome back gents, we have missed you. Thank, thank you. you. Firstly, Articon, can I just take a second to thank you for such an amazing weekend and introduction to the SPG tournament scene. James? There you go. It was incredible from start to finish. If anything has made me want to come back to the UK faster to be a bigger part. Thanks to all my games and my doubles partner, George. You were all fantastic sports and gave me many great games. Can't believe I did as well as I did 58th, given I had only played once before this weekend. That's incredible. 58th, having yeah. played once. That's pretty... Gush down over to business. Uh, no, gush, gush over <laughs> down to business. That was a different website I read that on. Um, during the quiz and presentation, we got to see the stat line for the new combat race. How do you see them being pointed, and what, if any, special rules do you think we may um, see, given they have little will and no fate? Spoilers. Yeah, probably, probably not. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. that's good. Don't know. Uh, given the results of my poll on the Facebook group, I think I will need to add a fiefdom's army to my collection. This is a different point. At some point in time, most likely when if we see the heroes released again. I have, have been told by the girlfriend who is likely buying me models for Christmas. I. Is that Citadel models or is that, you know? Victoria's Secret models. <laughs> that I must get an evil army. I'm joking. That would be um, that would be human trafficking. We <laughs> can't endorse that. Um, that I must get an evil army. That way I have one of each. I'm thinking of a Mordor army due to the fact it has so many options. But I'm also drawn to the Hobbit side with Borg and 
As a he said, Joe, what are your opinions on both armies? Volk! Yeah. Uh, Mordor army or Balg or a Gundabad army? Ah, uh, Gundabad. Yeah, I, I think Gundabad. Gundabad's more fun, I, I think. But Mordor gives you far more tactical options. Yeah. I think, yeah, and go with what uh, what you rather, what do you prefer, Lord of the Rings era or Hobbit era? Or what your girlfriend prefers. Yes, but told by the girlfriend I must get an evil army. That's, yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah, get her to pick. I would go for Gundabad at the moment. But uh, Mordor would be a lot cheaper as well. Mm. Money's an issue. You'll get more models for Christmas. Well, not really, because you can get Azog and Bolg and then you're most of the way there. Living or prayer? Once again, thanks for a fantastic weekend, a proper hobby introduction, really having back soon for uh, the, the Nazgul thing, um, we're not going to tell you what the actual points are, um, but uh, given they have little will or no fate, I would expect them to have some other way of being more survival. And as yes. for the lack of will, I don't think it will matter because I think they'll be combat wraiths mm -hmm. and they'll not be spellcasters. Yes. Okay, Stephen Bonner. Hi guys. A short time listener, but working through the back catalogue, one great bit after another. Firstly, congratulations on the baby news. Thanks. <laughs> Father of two. It's, it's appropriate, it works. Uh, very good. Um, hashtag Looper, hashtag GBHL. My questions are many. Do you require Felbies to be competitive in an 800 points EVA list? No. Sorry, man. Says the man who wins all the 800 point tournaments <laughs> without, without a Felbies. Felbies. Yeah, I suppose. Right. Glad we've established that. While running two, question two. While running two unnamed raves, two ten two on horses. Are there any tactics? Uh, are there any tactics they are better at than any of the other named raves at eight hundred point games? Probably not, no. other than being cheap. Two ten two. How much is two ten two? That's an extra seven pips. Yeah. So, so is that ninety five? Are they fifty five base? Yeah. So ninety. Yeah. Ninety. Plus no. the horse hundred. Spend the thirty points and give yeah. the named ones. Or which budget Witch King is kind of worth it, but I don't. I tell you what, I've played two unnamed roasts. They, I don't think they were that, and they were irritating to play mm -hmm. against. Like just having two sitting at the back going, immobilize that, immobilize that, immobilize that, just on one dice, again and again and again. It was quite irritating. Whereas if you take the named roast, then they normally, like you can get two dirt cheap ones. Near the points of one of the named yeah. ones, and you, then you get to cast two spells a turn, yeah. so that might be an advantage. Yeah. Um, question three: Am I wrong to add axes to Mordor or trackers? Um, theoretically, no. Morally, yes. <laughs> um, I booked him for Scouring of Sillingshire. I hope it was great uh, this year, and hope to meet you guys there. We did not meet you, but he bought our magazines. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, add axes if you like, but. Um, if they, the models weren't, didn't have them, I wouldn't no. stick them on. Yes. Next question. Davy Gravy 2. I usually watch your show but have never commented. However, after your great shout about me, I thought I should ask my first ever question. Enjoy the loop. What does he have to do? Uh, always question. Question yeah. everything. Yes. Uh, my question is regarding your opinions on Elven Cloaks. Given how Elven Cloaks are portrayed in the films and books, do you think that a better ruling for them would be one or both the following changes? One, a model may only benefit from the Elven Cloak rule if it's partially just good by scenery as opposed to humans, presumably those, and or a model must stay still to benefit from its own cloak. Although I get with this myself, I believe this would stop the handy and advantageous situation we see in game where models skulk behind shield walls. and let's be on honest, it's unrealistic for men painted in camo paint, for instance, not to be noticed while they march behind shiny warriors and ministers. <coughs> Obviously, elven cloaks are quite expensive, so if these are rules, do you think five points for heroes and two for warriors would be fairer? Cheers, lads. Yeah. I don't think they're meant to look like they're in camo paint if no. they're behind a shield wall. I think they're meant to look like they're a shield wall if they're behind a yeah. shield wall. But the I, fuck goes. I don't know. It, yeah, I, the, it really benefits elves, but and it's really just the heroes. I know there's Merkwood Rangers. I think your your change is possibly truer to the yes. to the fluff, but I I don't know. I think five points for the boon they get is quite good. Mm -hmm. Because it's quite a good bonus. Well, yeah, on a it's, warrior, it's a lot of points. Yeah, it, it's it's horrible on warriors. It's horrible on heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Like, there's five points to just whack. Because you always do it, and you whack an elven cloak on leggy, mm -hmm. hiding behind everything. Yeah. yeah. So on the heroes, then I think it, it would be a nice change. Uh, is it me? Connor heard. Lurtz is pretty awful too. Poor guys deserves a better bow at least. He does. He needs to be better. 
I'm sure he will be at some point in the future when they go back to revisit him. He's um he's top of the list. There's yeah. there's two I think. Theoden. Yeah, Theoden and Lurtz yeah. are the and Harmer. The two who. <laughs> there's three. If, if, you, there's if, you did, if you did a poll, I yeah. think of which profiles need to be improved. I genuinely think Theoden and Lurtz would be Neck a neck. mile yeah, above if... most other things. <laughs> who would be third? Kieran. Merkel Spider. Merkel Spider. Not anymore. Po after this book. Yeah, after, okay, this book. after this book. Um. Gandalf the White, perhaps. He's not. He's not awful though. No, is he? he's not... you never. You don't really see him particularly. Um. He's not as obvious. That's why they don't know that. So like, yeah, they're, they're so far. They're in the films. They're cool in the films, and then they're not great in the game. No, no. I, th I think they'll be up there. Yeah. Stephen Bonner, again. Just thought of another question. Absolutely fine, but maybe a full cast type question. What is considered? Com what is the considered competitive list at 500, 600, 750, 800, 1k points value armies in the current league setup? Cheers, guys. Hashtag the beard. Felbeast. I Isengard. No, not Fel Ferrells. Felbeast is 600. Okay. That's three Felbeast and she. 500 would be Jamie. Yeah, Wo's Wo Elves. Wo Elves. Or Goblin Town with Felbeast. Yeah. 500 is Goblin Town with Felbeast territory. 600. Felbeast. 750. Felbeast. <laughs> Maybe Lake Town. Lake yeah. Town. I'll take the 800. The 800 I'll be very happy with for the Farakas. And then 1,000 points. Oh, where, where's Riverdale Knights fit in? Is that about five? Where do you get your wizard, oh, yeah. your captain, and two knights? That's, that's quite Maybe. cheap, isn't it? 500. Um, I I don't think there's I think six hundred is is Felbeast mm. because it's it's spot on and you get the mm. three beasts and she love and it's yeah. so hard to deal with with only six hundred points to fight face it mm -hmm. the others I I don't think there's one the five hundred is very good for Jamie's yeah. Rose Elves James rates his all matted Rohan at five hundred mm. um, and then once you get bigger I think it's just a selection of the with competitive horse. armies yeah. yeah I really rate the Faruka list I run. Kind of seven fifty upwards, eight fifty would be ideal. Okay. Um, Callum D. Not sure if I'm too late. You want? Wouldn't not. have thought so. It was five weeks ago. <laughs> well, comment anyway. Glad to have you back, lads. Yeah. Hope all is well with everyone. Haven't asked a question for a while as I've been in a hobby rut, but seeing all of you t your tournament footage makes me want to get stuff together, immature, and try to make it one. Uh, make it to one someday. As someone who doesn't play the game very well, what other things can I do in and around the tournament scene? Would be nice to meet some of the community and absorb the atmosphere. Thanks guys, keep it up. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely just make your way to a tournament. There are, there will likely be one that's hopefully not too far from you that you can get along to. And if I was a new player, I'd probably like, if I wasn't wanting to be particularly competitive would go to one of the 80 point rather than 100 point events. Yep. They're generally a bit more, um, we generally have lists that are less competitive or less optimised. They're still, they're still kind of good lists, but the East Grinstead one in particular Come was on. fairly average. Get yourself on the Facebook yes. page, get involved yes. in the discussions on there. Um, maybe join some of the painting challenges. Mm -hmm. There's a there's the unexpected journey that Randy's running and Kev. Mm -hmm. There's the painting challenge every month on the um, one ring. They're all good ways to uh, do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the white. Well, quite late on the draw for that one. I must say. <laughs> oh, I see. We haven't done this before. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, I get answered. Not that I'm going to ask much other than hello. Not a question. Really, you are breaking the loop now. You pair of heretics. Speaking of heretics. I don't know what's going on here. When will we see a Warhammer 40k bat rep on the Hot Gates gaming side of things? When will we? Um, not soon, right. I think, is the answer to that, probably. Yeah. Uh, I've got more hobby projects that I'm prioritising. Uh, thanks guys, and for all time's sake, for such a long wait, give us a big... <laughs> lizard boy! <laughs> Are you doing a Jamie or James Lizard boy there? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> then, in a weird time lapse, 
Do you hear your podcast have said, unfortunately, already filmed Speak for Any Question, but having to heavily edit for various reasons, which is why it's taken ages to publish. We'll get around to everything eventually on HGG. There you go, there's the answer to that. But look, now the Speak for Any Question, it's crazy. Mm. And then Sam on the White says, Righto, no problemo, mate. Leaving us with just one question. From ADN. Hi, guys. A question about models in combat. If a model in close combat is compelled or gets affected by Eldemar Madrigal, as Jamie wants to... So yeah, that's probably what else Sentinel. Can that model be moved out of the combat? No. No. I mean, counter people are fought against this. I'm for what's written in the rules, which means they can't. Yeah, they can't. I'm pretty sure it says in the rulebook if you're engaged yeah. in combat, you can't move further that turn. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, but the the answer is is no. The yeah, accepted answer is the, no. I think it's to do with yeah. Once you've been in combat, you can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. That was it. Yeah, I guess an interesting one would be if you had a model who went into combat, that model they were against gets killed for whatever reason, and then someone tries to compel them. So they Yeah, the current the current FAQ on that is that that model can move. Right. That's in the current FAQ that if if the model you get, you get is killed, if your model's in combat and the model you're fighting gets killed and you haven't had your turn so to so move, you black then you move. One ring and ring. No, it's no. It's the answer's no. The answer's no. In it's the FAQ, it says you can't move. In the current FAQ, it says... You can't move if okay. um, you've been charged. Yeah. But uh, that's one of those things that people bring up and go, what about this? And goes, has it ever happened to you in a go? go no. Well, put it in a FAQ. It's not frequently asked. It's never asked. It's different. Camels. <laughs> and that's and it. On that bitter, bitter note. Bitter note. Uh, we've raced through those. Oh, yeah, so quick. Yeah. With that beautiful interlude. I think it was shorter than the original one. <laughs> I think we still brought it in under... Under that, it was mammoth the first yeah, one. I think it was you guys asked so many questions. So many questions. When to be fair, they did have five weeks. Yeah, to if ask you do questions. a comment review, you can just call it that right out. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty so, questions about dwarves. We can deal with that in <laughs> one. Uh, in short, dwarves are going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, get down. In short, pun. Way. Well, sketch. Maybe. And there you go. There's a speak for any question for this week. Um, as we said. Hopefully next week, um, James Unt friend will be uh, back as normal. Is that, um, is that a sting? <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> he gets he gets someone different on every week. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we will see you for speak friend question in about a year, I guess. Yeah. We did one at yours, didn't we? We've done it once before yes. at Bista. Yes. Um, funny thing. Um, and there you go. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'd say don't ask us questions, but you know what? Spam the hell out of them next week. <laughs> Talk about Damien and Tom. Ask them lots of Damien and Tom and questions. all the dwarf questions. And then they can do their Damien and Tom impressions <laughs> the way that we uh, did our Jamie and Jamie impressions. Until then, don't forget to um, comment, like, share and subscribe. Uh, support your Hobbit hosts in the link below. Uh, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your Hobbit Hobbit. And happy strategy battle gaming. Sock! <laughs> <laughs>